enterprise level custom software is expensive, time consuming, and risky. The things that make business owners nervous. But the custom software market is expected to grow to just under $200 billion because sometimes custom software is the only way to solve constraints that stop business from making or saving tens of millions. Here are three different examples of those sometimes. This video was made for business owners. And by the end, you will have a clearer understanding of how custom software can help a business make money or save money like nothing else. There will be three different examples, one B2C, one B2B, and one internal ERP. And your homework is to see how these apply to your business. Think of software as a business tool, which it is. It's like a corporate jet. They are both expensive, but when you see a CEO boarding a jet, it's because this CEO generates so much money on the clock that the business saves more by flying him straight to meetings. It's not to show off, mostly. And like a jet, software is industry agnostic. So F&B, e-commerce, B2C, B2B, doesn't matter. Software can help you scale like nothing else. Competitors will think you are a fish because you have so much skill. Sorry, let's get to our first example, McDonald's and B2C self-serve option. McDonald's is a global industry in selling burger-shaped piles of salt and fat, and occasionally they will come out with something actually tasty. Either way, they are a multi-billion dollar company, and their 2023 report shows over $25 billion in revenue, which $8 billion was profit. I'm sure they've got many custom software solutions for internal use, but the one I want to talk about is a very public one, and it's the interface for their self-serve kiosk. McDonald's began implementing this kiosk as far back as 2003, and to my knowledge, they started the trend you see in other fast food outlets like KFC and Taco Bell. There are several benefits to self-serve option. Customers are less pressured compared to interacting with an employee. Turns out, Touch screens make people buy more impulsively. If you completely automate the ordering process, you can direct manpower to getting the orders ready. It's no surprise then that McDonald's has never looked back. And there's a Business Insider article from 2017 that reported a 6% growth in sales for McDonald's thanks to the kiosk. 6% doesn't sound like much, but 6% of McDonald's total revenue for 2017, which is $22.8 billion, meant an extra $1.37 billion US dollars. And let's assume it was all made from Big Macs, which according to the Big Mac index cost about $5.30 in 2017. That's an extra $258,566,037 Big Macs. That is a lot of burgers. The reason the kiosk works is because of the software behind it. There's another Business Insider article from 2018, which is a more qualitative piece on the kiosk. And here are some words used to describe the user experience. Straightforward, intuitive, easy, accurate, customizable, and faster than the human cashier. My sponsored post senses are tingling, but I've ordered from their kiosk, and if you have, I think we can agree with this assessment. I don't think we doubt the value of self-service options, and not just for burgers and fries. It could be for any retail product. A more important question is, why go custom? You can get similar, not identical, but similar off-the-shelf solution. Well, for one, it's McDonald's. They don't need to use AppSumo's deal of the day. But look at the list of descriptors. The one that sticks out to me is customizable. McDonald's has all these options for customers to tweak their orders in unique ways. They also have promotions and sets and bundles they want to feature. Try telling the cashiers to share that with every customer. But with software, that's no problem. So if your business is not necessarily complex, but different, or you want it to be different, custom software allows you to tailor the customer journey to include anything you can think of. You want a loyalty program, a VIP section, virtual reality, etc, etc, etc. And the journey can be reordered any way you want. So if you want to change things around, even if it's just to test things out, you can. Hey, what do you think of the McDonald's example? Are you loving it? Subscribe, I love you too. Back to the video. Number two, Air Canada and B2B integrations. In the McDonald's example, doesn't matter whether you are a five-year-old kid or a billionaire property manager. Both of you want apple pies and Big Macs. So it's the same flow every time. But there are businesses, many in fact, that serve 
different types of buyers. You could have a business simultaneously serving a huge B2C and B2B audience. And you can't just have the same for both. That's what we can see with Air Canada's Connex airline ticketing platform that serves day-to-day -day B2C consumers and B2B agents buying tickets on behalf of their own clients. By the way, they're never going to see this, but kudos to them for great documentation. If you go through their user guide, you will see it allows users to do what you would expect from an airline ticketing platform, which is to create profiles, browse, purchase, cancel, and upgrade tickets. The custom part shows itself in the types of user roles. There are four, admin, agent, sub-admin, sub-agent. And clearly the admin has the most privileges with access to all platform features. And you have sub-agents who by the looks of it can only do window shopping before reporting back to the agent. What are these roles and what do they do? It doesn't matter. The real business takeaway here is that with custom software, you can have multiple user roles, each with different permissions and access levels. You can even get them to see completely different interfaces. And Connex is just one of Air Canada's options for agents. It's their desktop app for smaller agencies to create a profile and book tickets. Air Canada also have their own API. See, I was a bigger agency with my own company platform. I can connect my platform to Air Canada's platform and book tickets directly from my company's interface. From what I can tell, Air Canada's ecosystem was really only launched in 2023. And in Q4 2023, they reported a profit compared to losing money in Q4 2022. And according to an article from February this year, Air Canada is set to surpass their projected 2024 profits due to increased demand for international travel. I'm doing some armchair detective work here, but is it that hard to believe Air Canada's Connex platform positions them to make the most of this demand? Before we go to the final example, two custom software takeaways here. If your business deals with multiple target audiences, two things custom software can do for you, and that is creating custom experiences and permission for a theoretically unlimited number of different users' profiles within the platform. And create an API so that if your clients have their own platforms and their own developers, your two platforms can be connected. I'm based in Malaysia, and that's basically what's going on with my government at the moment. They're trying to implement nationwide standardized electronic invoicing. They've got two options. They've got an app called My Invoice for normal people and smaller businesses to log in and submit e-invoice on the platform. And it has an API so bigger businesses with their own platforms can integrate with My Invoice and submit e-invoices from their own platforms. Number three, N&N and &N Moving Supplies and ERP Solutions. This is actually a very well-documented case study. It's also different from the first two. With McDonald's, it was custom software to sell to a homogeneous B2C market. I don't know what other word to use other than that, but it means all their customers are the same. With Air Canada, it was a custom solution to sell to a diverse B2B audience. With n and it's not about making money, but saving costs by integrating and streamlining internal processes. And generally, there are three big ones, manufacturing, sales, marketing. An ERP connects them all and a well-executed custom ERP does it really well. n and is a US-based wholesaler and supplier of moving equipments and packing products. I mentioned how their custom ERP is extensively covered and here's some information I found from learning material from a management course. And it's all supported by the official testimonial page. It's paywall, but there's enough of a preview to get the gist of it. Here's the abridged story. n and n Moving Supplies expanded from one location to three locations across several states. They also quadrupled their labor force during the time. They begin to face challenges with maintaining accurate time records and reconciling payrolls using QuickBooks and a third-party payroll provider. So they built and implemented a unified ERP with built-in time clock solution. And what did they get in return? An 84% reduction in payroll processing time, improved speed in balancing accounts, enhanced accuracy in tracking hours and vacation time, and labor cost trend overview in all three locations. In other words, management could see what was going on in three sites across different states and make sure that internal HR and accounting processes were being carried out properly in real time. I'm really happy to include NNN here because NetSuite lists them as earning between five to 10 million US dollars 
annually. Compared to McDonald's and Air Canada, they are tiny. But between 5 to 10 million is more than big enough where custom solutions start to make the most sense. That's when the corporate jets come into play. And that is the end of the third example. Now, I'd like to test you. We looked at three examples of custom software, three very different use cases, different industries. The companies were different sizes. And in all three examples, one common factor. What was it? Clue, it's in the name. Customizability. So long as you hire properly and you have the budget. The main reason you build custom software is the ability to create a digital solution that solves your most complex or trivial problems. It's your solution. So what's the minimum budget for it? Depending on your needs, it could go into the millions. But if you can spare 50,000 US dollars, you can begin to explore custom solutions with the promise of ROI either through more sales or productivity or both. If you have that kind of budget and you're looking for a custom solution, I'm going to shamelessly promote myself here, but my team and I have been building custom software solutions for companies doing at least five to $10 million in revenue for the past seven years. We're pretty good at it. Obviously, I'm going to say that. So you'll be the judge. There's a link in the description to apply to work with us. And I look forward to hearing from you. If you're not at the hiring stage yet, I think the next step for you is to understand how and why software development costs as much as it is. Here's a video where I break down all the fixed and variable costs involved in development. I end with tips on where clients can save money and where trying to save money is going to cost you more. Subscribe if you haven't and let's get to know each other better. Leave a comment saying, what's your favorite vegetable? Mine is broccoli. See you guys.